We are live. Welcome to 2008's The Eye Review and Thoughts. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. Also, if you're only interested in the review, that part of the video is not the whole length of the video. To see its length, check the time codes in the description box. If this is a movie that you love, I want to make it clear up front. I don't hate you. I don't think you're wrong. You know, this. these are just opinions. I disagree with you, but I don't think... Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't... If you express an opinion that, you know, goes against what I say in this video, the only thing I ask is that you keep it respectful, and I'll answer respectfully. If you write something hateful, whether it's directed towards me or anybody else, most likely I'm just going to ignore you. So, yeah, the reason that I specify that this is the 2008 The Eye is I did not mean to do that. I have already done a video on the 2002, the Chinese original The Eye. This video is about the 2008 Jessica Alba remake. And that came out angrier than or the angrier than I meant it to. Before I get further into that, I'd, I'd just like to note, you know, so yeah, the, the covers behind me, you know, obviously there's the I-2008 itself, then there is the I-2002, which also has the sequel, Chinese sequel. Then I put up the, uh, the, the site, the failed pilot by directed by Paul Tom, Paul W. S. Anderson. Oh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Ow. I not I'm not sure I got enough sleep last night. Put up the others. And where for the 2002 the eye, I put up my physical copy of Silent Hill 3, which I think arguably is the best of the trilogy, of the original trilogy, which, let's be honest, it probably shouldn't have gone beyond the original trilogy. There are things in the first two that they perfected by the time of the third one, you know. Because I, I yeah, so I, I put that one up to, to underline that I was talking about a particularly excellent example of Asian horror. For the Jessica Alba version, I put up Silent Hill Homecoming because this is the... American, Americanized version that misunderstands the appeal and just, like, nobody wanted this. Not, not a single person on the planet, I'm obviously joking, thought that it would be a good idea to simply make, like, just, I mean, if you absolutely have to, if, if subtitles are just unacceptable, just, like, do a, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, um, do a dub. Of of the original, you know, but yeah, no, of course they had to they had to go and Americanize it, and that covers my into protest. So I am currently dealing with some pain in my back, but I still have a lot to say about the movies that I watch. So I might at least in parts of this video speak faster until my back feels better. And that brings us to yeah so this movie's a remake i try to grade any remake on the curve the reason is i like not being miserable which is what i will be if i focus on all the ways that it is inferior to the original very few remakes are as good as the one or multiple movies that it is a remake of it's the remake because they figure it's a better way of ensuring making a lot of money off it but that doesn't have to mean that it's automatically bad hence grading on a curve I don't have any personal issues with almost any filmmakers, and I almost never let any issues I might have interfere with my review and analysis. This movie did not ruin my life, my childhood, my day, or any other amount of time. The the genre, medium, or media in general, to me. I don't go into any movie hoping to dislike it. And... brings us
yeah, so content warning and or trigger warning. So the movie features, and I'm going to be discussing at least some of the following potentially triggering content, torture, ableism, gaslighting, xenophobia, body horror, bullying and other abuse, cancer, suicide, and I think those are all of them. So, the movie's rated PG-13, and so is this video. I realize that the reason why Hollywood makes horror movies that are rated PG-13 is because then more people can watch them, but I wish Hollywood would stop making PG-13 horror movies because they're almost always bad. You know, this movie does rely a lot on the psychological aspect. It is essentially a psychological horror movie, and because of that, it doesn't fare as badly as most PG-13 horror movies. You know, the only good PG-13 horror movie I know is The Ring, and I will grant technically that one is mostly psychological. I am not going to spoil the reasons why I say it's only mostly. Now, let's see. so, right, and this video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. Most visual gets is when I sometimes act something out. So feel free to watch something visual, like clips from one of these movies in another tab. I won't mind. I got this movie on sale. So anything negative I say in this, it's not out of bitterness. I don't feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. It's not that I'm upset at how it compares to the original, to other movies like it, what I was expecting, trailers and other marketing. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I say in this video are for criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what it was trying to achieve, etc. So, in a lot of ways, the movie is similar to the Chinese original. So, I'm not going to mention all the things where they're similar. I'm going to talk about the ways that they're different from one another. So, I'm not just repeating myself. And that brings us... Right. Since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to say during this video, it is possible that I will touch my face. I want to assure you, I washed my hands since last time I was outside. And I will wash my hands again before going out. And, yeah, so I I have watched this movie somewhere between three and five times. And the first viewing was in 2010. And that brings us to the plot. Southern California, present day, well, 2008. 20-something Sydney lost her sight at age 5, but now she gets a cornea transplant, which restores her sight, but she also starts seeing things that other people don't seem to be able to see. And... Right, so... Uh, for... Yeah, personally, I don't mind that people who aren't, like, big horror fans criticize horror. But I know for some people it matters a lot, so I want to underline, despite my criticisms of this and other stories like this, I am a big fan of ghost stories, Asian horror, and psychological horror. Now, let's see, so the... Yeah, the... the other than the original I... Which, did I only end up giving that one a 7? Huh. You know, I've watched the American The Grudge, which I would give a 7 out of 10. I know I, I've, I'm, I've heard that the original is better. What can I say? When, when the American version came to a theater near me, let's see. I want to say it was... Maybe Sam Raimi's name attached somehow. I'm pretty sure there was a, 
an American horror genius name attached. So, yeah, that's why I watched it without having watched the original. And I watched the American The Ring, which is an 8 out of 10 for me. I, I haven't watched Ringu 1, but I have watched Ringu 2. That one's a solid 7 out of 10. I haven't watched the original Uninvited, but the American remake gets a 7 out of 10 for me. Mirrors gets a 7. Gothic gets a 5. Skeleton Key gets a 7. Yeah. So, the... That brings us. Yeah, before I start talking about the technical aspects, let me start by saying the people are very talented. I'm not calling into question anyone's skill or enthusiasm, but especially the people behind the camera. Now, the writing. This was written by Sebastian Guterres. I'm going to go ahead and guess. And this and Gothica are the only of the movies that he's written that I've watched. He also wrote Snakes on a Plane. I don't have a problem with the, the concept of that movie, but I do hear that they don't do a good job of, like, I think that kind of thing could, you could make a really great movie out of that. You could make a funny satire of just like ridiculous horror movie concepts but I hear that I want to say it was Jay Exe who reviewed it it was it was a really excellent review I recommend watching that more than I recommend checking out the movie he also directed huh he directed almost every single movie he wrote other than this one he did not direct this movie I think, but he did direct Yeah. This and Snakes on a Plane and, and Gothica are the only ones that he Yeah. And The writing is a good place to start for the Americanization. So the original movie leaves some questions unanswered, and this is 100% critical to horror. Because what you don't understand is always going to be scarier than what you do understand. And yeah, the the this this one goes and explains some things that like the 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 Chinese original keeps it unclear why you know how how is it that that the yeah I suppose I I I just realized I didn't bring up spoilers I'm not going to spoil this movie in the in the review section but hmm i guess technically it would make the most sense not to spoil the chinese original i'll 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 just say that this movie gets yeah this this movie gives a a like concrete scientific explanation for why the the Yeah, I think that I'll, I'll leave it that vague for now. And yeah, it's just like, it's not impossible to bring science into a horror movie. I would argue that the 1982 The Thing does an incredible job of using science to make something scarier. Noting that that movie also does not over-explain. Like, it explains the things that 
it's very important that we understand, but it also leaves some things unexplained to where the, the audience can fill, you know, we are, our horrifying subconscious can fill in the, the, yeah. And yeah, the, the writing for characters is fine. Like characterization, it tends to be perfectly decent and t tends to like uh, consistent and that brings me to plot twists I don't think there are too many of them I don't think there are too few of them you know what overall they're not they're not too bad they're they're reasonably like yeah but I would argue that the reason that the twist I would argue that the the best of the twists in this are the ones where it can use maybe not the exact same twist as the Chinese original but something very similar and it's more, that's why it's not, the, those twists aren't worse. Because there is at least one twist, if you could call that, in this, that is kind of ridiculous. And I'll get into it in the thoughts section. So this was directed by the duo David Moreau and Javier Palut. It's, it's not the, you know, it's not like one of them shot part of the movie and then the other one came in for like reshoots or something. No, no. They they work together if if I understand correctly. They they simply Yes, yes. For a second I got confused by my notes. But yeah, the the this is the only movie that David Moreau has directed that he didn't also write, sensing a theme here, and Javier Palud also directed, you know, co-directed co some of, or actually to put it another way, I guess this is, yeah, it's this and then one other movie that they, they co-directed. And Javier helped write one of the, uh, yeah, helped write the other one that they, the 2006 movie Them, the other movie that they co-directed. So, yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to I'm to I'm going to quote a little from my from my old review here. I took a shot at the line I'm dreaming things I've never seen. No, seriously, that's a line in this. What? You mean you have an active subconscious? This is yet another Americanized remake of Asian horror and completely blows it as is usually the case. Seriously, other than the ring, they all suck. They don't even wait very long to do them. I think it says a lot that what this is based on uses shadows and vague, if at times grotesque, images, and this uses rising flames and outright explosions. Oh, they have sequences from it. They're often carelessly rehashed, at times downright phoned in. Once they run out, they simply repeat them, and they detract rather than add. A couple, of, a couple are stripped of their relevance, of the new things included, only when it's interesting, and none of them impact the whole. This can't go ten minutes without something happening. Several occurrences are out of nowhere and could be cut and it would only get shorter. This is in such a hurry, nothing is allowed to linger or sink in. Of no build-up, it doesn't work. We don't care. It tries way too hard, constantly throwing crap at us. The jump scares are dumb. Those can be great. They aren't here. A couple of things are dumped into this with no effort made to render them effective. 
fear the sound of a spoon being dropped. Find yourself in the grip of pure terror at the sight of ghosts that are pale and nearly have pronounced facial features. Is this for real? I don't think the duo of French directors were right for the subtle tone this ought to go for. I might give Ills a chance. Yeah, yeah, one of the others that they... I guess, no, that, that David Moreau directed. What's to be afraid of in this? The scientific explanation removes any anxiety that might have been established. In my case, none. Why is this so tough a concept? If we don't know, we'll be wary of it. When we do, we can label it and calm down. The latter is not the goal of this genre. This refuses to let the viewers use their imagination using cheap and obvious narration. And yeah, there's narration in the original, but it's not bad. And obvious dialogue to spell everything out. So this, according to IMDb trivia, this is the 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 director duo's second feature film, first American film. They were offered the job thanks to the success of their French horror film Them in 2006, and they liked the fact that they could really work on what was not obviously supernatural and that there were great opportunities to play with the audience's minds to show them things that they couldn't determine were real. I mean I can I can see that a little bit. I, I wish m more of it had worked but there's a little bit of that, yeah. And yeah, I'm gonna quote some fellow critics here. Brothers Danny and Oxide Peng's unnerving spook show from 2002 has been translated into a clunky, aimless interpretation. It creates a good atmosphere, but no tension. The movie is just not memorable. Voldemort lookalikes hiss at her in the street. She stares in the mirror and sees another face. And restaurants she visits aren't serving the living any longer. The most frightening aspect of this supernatural horror film, a remake of the 2002 Hong Kong thriller, is that there was a 114 minute version before someone took pity and snipped it down to a lugubrious 97. Holy crap, this thing used to be longer? Yeah, that's that's scary. That's the scariest thing about this. Wow. Ever had a premonition of imminent catastrophe only to watch helplessly as the worst unfolds? You have if you saw the previews for this snoozer of a paranormal shocker and bought a ticket anyway. Overall, it has the feeling of a direct video movie. Yes, very true. I forgot that I copied that in because some of these notes prepare for a really long time before. Yeah, that's very, very true. I was trying to think, what is that? But yeah, direct to video, very direct to video feel. It's as if on the umpteenth Asian horror Xerox, the ink has run dry. Some say it's more of a supernatural drama than horror. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely some truth to that. I see boring people. I'm not sure if anybody would like this film. It's not going to appeal to fans of the original and for older horror fans. It's just like a very bad version of I from John Carpenter's Body Bags. It's very dated, and that's a terrible thing for a new film to be. We're subjected to an inane, gimmicky thriller in which the heroine improbably manages to run across either a dead person or someone doomed to die just about every time she turns a corner. There's no end of point-of-view shots in which ghouls jump out and yell boo at the audience, but the whole thing is as scary as a youngster dressed in a bedsheet doing the same thing on Halloween. And while the eye might not stoop to the unwatchable level of One Missed Call or The Ring 2, yeah, holy crap, The Ring 2 is bad, it still isn't very good. It provides solid scares but little to no atmosphere, which any fan of the original will know is the bedrock of any Japanese horror film. And I appreciate that. I'm pretty sure that was intentional, that they they wrote which, like, the the job title instead of the, yeah. It was boring and very predictable. I actually thought I was watching a made-for-TV movie. And one critic just wrote a horror movie. I mean, that is factually correct. I, I can't really fault you there. But yeah, the, the direction, it's just... 
if this is how the the this duo usually make movies, I don't think that it's automatically bad, but it's wrong for this kind of thing. You know, a, a ghost story requires a lot of subtlety to pull off satisfyingly. I mean, if let's hypothetically say that this movie was a slasher movie, I th I think it, it it you know and. I should I should say for those who don't know I love slasher movies. I think they could do a pretty decent job with a slasher movie because the 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 scares that they go for in this just make more sense if it's that there's something living that's threatening you because the idea with you know yeah so if you if you haven't watched the Chinese one or if you forgot or you know the basic idea is these are not really these it's not a story about ghosts trying to hurt the living. They're not even intentionally scaring the living. The, the fear comes from this realization. It, it's like this sort of... It's scary because it reminds us that a lot of people have died and the concept in the Chinese original, you know, that's that's another thing. Like, it's it's very culturally specific. This is not really quite the same. Like, if you ask the average American, define a ghost, they would say that if something is a ghost, it means they have some sort of, like... Okay, to be... Yeah, the, the unfinished business aspect is there in, in both. But very frequently, American ghost stories are about revenge. The, the person who died was wronged, maybe even murdered, and they're back to get revenge. And that's just not what the Chinese movie is about. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but if you're doing a remake, you, yeah, I guess you kind of have to, or, or you have to completely reinvent it. I would be open to that. But this is a movie that pretends like American ghosts are the same as Chinese ghosts. The part, part of the, the scary thing, the Chinese movie paints a picture of a world where everywhere you go, there are ghosts. And they're just, you know, some of them are reliving their death. Some of them are, like, trapped in the place they died. Some of them are confused. Some are angry. They're not trying to hurt anyone. But they don't just the 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 thing that's scary in the chinese movie is the idea of being able to perceive all these ghosts and it's basically you know a, a lot of chinese people already believe that if you die you are locked to or you might be locked to the place where you, you know but basically they have this idea that if you die you still have a life you still go you know you you still need to eat you still go around to places, you know, and the, 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 this movie, on multiple occasions, there will be this implied threat, and it just doesn't really make sense. It's just, because in both movies, the protagonist will spot someone, realize they're a ghost, and maybe even see this sort of this this figure escorting the ghost to the beyond and this is sort of just you know it's it's maybe creepy and sad and solemn in the chinese movie but here it's supposed to be kind of scary and it's like you know the this this dark figure will kind of turn and snarl and like, you know, yeah, well, I, I just quoted a critic saying they look like Voldemort. Yeah, kind of. And the, just, yeah, the, the snarl and growl. And it's like, I, I think in the, I believe it's in the DVD. On, on the DVD, in the special features, they explain that the reason they growl is because they don't like being seen. They don't want the living to be aware that, you know, that's what they're doing. And I think that's a perfectly 
reasonable explanation for a really bad idea. I, I get that. I get what you're going for there. But it just does like it's it's so silly. Like if the idea is supposed to be that these are like grim reapers. They're they're there to to collect these you know, the recently departed, then are we supposed to feel threatened by the growling? Like it's just like it it's I guess it's it's a little like if you if you pass by a, a stranger's house and there's like a, a dog that's that's clearly like it it's clear that it can't get out but it's like barking i mean okay, okay fair enough if you're afraid of barking dogs you know what i'm sure this movie is very scary to people who have an intense fear of voldemort lookalikes hissing at them but like it just it doesn't make any sense like are we supposed to think that the lead S sydney is in some kind of danger because that's not that that would you're you're barking up the wrong tree there that's not what the you know the if she doesn't if she isn't in a situation where she could get hurt or even die you know yeah if she isn't in a situation where she could die the grim reaper can do absolutely nothing it's it's just barking even though it's it's clearly not able to reach her you know and it just it just attracts attention to something like the idea of seeing the Grim Reaper escort away a soul, and some of these are like young people, like you're like they have their whole life ahead of them, you know. That's that is legitimately like not scary in the way that again like a slasher movie is, where you're like, oh, someone's gonna die, you know. But it does like it's a it's a there's a there's a pain there there's a there's an anxiety there there's something unpleasant that can be mined for horror but the moment that the grim reaper is growling it's just like what am i even watching like what who thought that was a good idea we already know that the grim reaper isn't there for sydney it growling just makes it all the more like now we're like, okay, wow, he really can't do anything. Because, cause like, presumably, if he really had a problem with it, he wouldn't just growl. He would be like, you know, he'd, he'd turn to face the soul that he's escorting. He'd be like, I'm going to let you finish. And he'd, like, actually approach her. But, of course, that doesn't happen because he can't do anything to her. That's That's, like, I guess maybe it would be scary if you didn't know. But, like... You like as you you find out as a child the the idea at the very least maybe a teenager and this movie is meant for teenagers. You know you you learn that the the idea of the Grim Reaper is not that he he's not Jack the Ri he's not Jack the Ripper he's not a killer he escorts souls. When you witness the Grim Reaper, you are made painfully aware of the permanence of death. But let's make him growl, cause cause he's a Rottweiler now, a impotent Rottweiler barking at someone passing the just yeah. I do have positive things to say about this. I think that the opening of the movie is actually pretty decent. The very first scene that the movie shows is something that the audience isn't going to understand right away. It works as a hook for a movie that otherwise has a concept that modern American audiences aren't going to find all that compelling by itself. Again, you know, for... for I, I'm not going to speak for Chinese audiences, but I could imagine that they found the idea compelling of just, you know, like... A number of Asian horror movies, the ghost is actually, you know, the ring, I, I want to say that's Japanese, not Chinese, but yeah, you know, the ring is about a vengeful ghost. So, you know, that one, you don't really need to, to, to pretty it up. It's just, that's, yeah, that, that appeals to a lot of people. But the, the idea, the, the idea of the original movie is basically 
we all know that ghosts are all around us. Imagine if you could see them. Imagine if everywhere you go, you see someone who's recent, or not always recently, but someone who has died, and you are reminded that we all die, we all will die, and and you know, ghosts just wander aimlessly and and don't you know that that works for the and and I don't I'm not sure they were particularly thinking of a non-Asian audience for that. I think they were primarily thinking this is going to, you know, this is, you know, the, like, the way that, like, a Michael Bay movie is sure to attract a lot of American audiences, you know. It's what they like to see. So, yeah, you know, making an American version of something like that, I... An argument could be made that it's another, like, it's definitely an, um, it's a very American aspect of the movie, because it's not really something, like, it, when you watch the Chinese movie, it's very clear this is not really something they wanted you to think very much about. It's it's supposed to kind of be a surprise in, in the original, and, and I think also maybe that to some extent this was made for people who did already watch the original and just want to see it again, just... Now, people speak English all the time instead of only briefly. And and for that, it's, you know, yeah, drawing it to, like, the movie is basically telling, it's, it's telling the people who already know the twist, the, the main twist going in, don't worry, we're aware that you came into this, you already know, knew. You know, there is still going to be something for you. After that, we get a few scenes of Sydney's life as a blind person before the surgery. We see her apartment, we see how some things are set up to make it easier for someone blind to use. And this also helps set it apart from the original, which only showed her walking using a walking stick before going to the surgery. You know, basically just a very, very straightforward cinematic language of this is a blind person. You know, if, if it just... If it immediately showed the surgery, you know, that it wouldn't have the same effect. But we've just been shown a blind person. There's narration explaining she's been blind for a long time. And then we see the surgery, you know. But in this, they, yeah, we get a sense of what her life was like before the surgery. And that is a, a logical kind of, yeah, you know, it kind of, it gives us more of an idea of what the, you know, showing us how different her life is. I'm not saying that, you know, the, the, the Chinese original should have showed her life before. I'm just, I'm saying I'm glad it's not a, a carbon copy. You know, overall, the, the original is by far the superior film, but I do think that it was, yeah, it, it was a logical change to make. The opening titles, some some horror movies have incredible opening titles. This, it's just white text in a bland font over a couple of early scenes. I guess, actually, come to think of it, I think there's some chance that it's to, to make sure that they can get into the rest of the movie as quickly as possible, because that actually is, like, the... the not a single thing in this movie is remotely as scary as the opening credits of the Chinese original. That kind of, I, I don't, maybe, maybe it's them throwing their hands in the air, like, not like they just don't care, but saying, we give up, whatever, we can't, we, we get, we can't be as scary as this. Like, it, again, if, if you haven't watched it recently, or, or you don't know, the, the opening credits for the Chinese movie Basically, it's like this this white uh, sheet, I guess, and like the names will be in braille, and like hands, disembodied hands, will like press up against it and like feel their way. And you know, I'm not saying there's anything at all wrong with like I, I get that you know that is like if if you are blind or you your your sight isn't the best. You, you see with your hands. There's nothing wrong with that. 
but these are disembodied hands and there's just and there's just also there's too many of the hands kind of like it's just and and yeah to to reiterate what i said in maybe on the on the original movie disembodied hands groping at you will always be creepy you know that's just not something you're okay with seeing and i don't i don't think it's even very long it's maybe 2 minutes of opening credits you know it's, it's not that many names they have to get get through it's not you know it's not like way back in the i want to say like 50s when they had like 5 minutes of opening credits and like zero ending credits not going to lie i'm a little glad that we're past that anyway yeah it's it's maybe 2 minutes but it feels like 10 cuz you're sitting there and you're just like please end please end please stop that right now it is extremely uncomfortable I'm not going to give away whether this movie has a happy ending or a sad ending. It fits with what came before uh, reasonably. I don't hate everything about the ending. It doesn't have Deus Ex Machina. It does have a little convenient writing. I should I should specify, when I say a little convenient writing, in this particular case, I do mean a small concentrated ball of intensely convenient writing it's it it only affects a fairly small chunk of the movie but it is like it's like a black hole of contrivance i'm going to quote my old review a little bit more after a lousy conclusion, nope, they didn't bother to fix the last third, in fact, they worsened it, they run the ending credits over schlocky pop to incite audiences to run out of the theater. Which is nice for the, uh, concession? No, wait, not, wait, yeah, the people who work at the theater have to clean up our mess. And, yeah, briefly quoting a few fellow critics. The problem with the eye is the territory into which the plot eventually rambles. The less said about the ending, the better. It's stupid and insulting and makes a mockery of everything that comes before it. Other than that, that's okay. The third act of the film, despite a visually impressive climax, is rather weak, full of slow and uninteresting explanation. Yeah. So this movie... This is where I usually go into whether or not the movie loses your interest along the way. I would I would say that the movie loses your interest every so often. It's it's fairly aimless. There's not really much of a build up. I, the the Chinese original is fairly episodic, but at least there is this this sort of sense of like, you know, first she's recovering, then she starts trying to like change her life in the way that it can now be like you know in, in the original she she says she wants to learn how to write and get a job based on that and we see her in calligraphy class which is a logical you know if if you if you are blind you know you you can't write the way that yeah you know it's it's just you you need to if if you can't see, it's it's more difficult to write in a very yeah. I I think I've made I, I'm I'm a little worried. I I hope I don't sound ableist. The you know there there are things that blind people can do that the rest of us have much more trouble with. And yeah, this movie like they don't spend very long on the on the recovery at all. They probably figured that people would get bored with that really really quickly. But that, I, yeah, that she doesn't, she doesn't try to change her life particularly. She can, like, literally, you know, again, like, it kind of, it kind of perfectly sums up. Like the Chinese, you know, Chinese version, a young woman gets, you know, her eyesight, she tries to learn how to write. She wants to get a job, take care of herself so that her grandmother doesn't have to anymore. 
American version, young woman gets her eyesight. I don't know if she already had the idea because it's the. I don't know what they're called. It, um, it's someone who works at the apartment complex, and he, I guess he helps out with elevators. I think it has a name, but I don't. I don't attend such fancy places, so I don't really know. But yeah, you know, he's he helps her into the elevator, and he says. Welcome to the world of 200 channels. Smash cut, she's like chowing down on ice cream, watching TV, and and like channel hopping, and like you know, the yeah, eating, eating ice cream by herself, watching TV to appeal to the young women who can be like, it me, and it's Jessica Alba for the straight male viewer who can be like might she do me? I can't even I that's funnier than anything I could think of to, to in any any joke that I could make up about the movie the the fact that that's literally and and then she's interrupted by a a bad ghostly vision thing because this movie can't go even a few minutes without something it would be fine if they build if, if you know the movie can't go very long without something happening but the things that happen don't build on each other it's just kind of different variations on the same thing it's a boo jump scare based around the fact that she can now see ghosts. That's basically it. You know, her apartment complex, ghosts. Goes to a restaurant, ghosts. Walks down the street, ghosts. Tries to watch TV, ghosts. There's nothing interesting to, you know, the... the there are... There are very frequent scares in the American The Ring but they all build like very early on you just get a sense okay there's something going on here and then like a lot of the movie is spent trying to figure out what is going on how did it start and along the way as the protagonist exam you know tries, looks into this mystery we gradually do get more information it's it's not just the same exact thing. And and there's much more variety to the scares in in that. You know, like the the you know, seeing her like watch a a I guess I I don't really want to give anything away from if if you watch the American the Ring, you you know what I'm talking about. There's a there are a lot of very varied scares. In this movie, it tends to just be like something will catch her attention. She'll she'll investigate, and there's a, a ghost thing. You know, some sometimes I'll I'll grant it's not always the exact same. Like there are there there are times where like it's maybe the there there's like fire that's you know scary and the first thing we'll see is smoke or it'll sound like there's something wrong with her oven and then she'll open it to investigate that kind of thing so it's not 100 percent the same but there's not enough variety and part of it is also just like the ring there's a lot to mine there once the video has been introduced there are a lot of different tools in the toolkit. And at the end of the day, like this movie, like there's there's fire, there's violent death. That's about it, you know, like on, on multiple occasions, it'll be and and you know, violent death through the fire. That's that's basically that's the note they're playing and yeah. Now the yeah. So one of the problems 
of this, you know, for, for this remake is that it doesn't really understand the appeal of the original. You know, it's it's not, the, the way that this movie is handled, it can't just be that they were like, okay, I, I, I get why that worked for the Chinese version, but we gotta like amp it up a bit, you know, gotta, gotta get some steroids under that thing. No, no, no. They didn't understand the appeal. They did not understand... I'm not gonna repeat myself, because I already did explain why the idea of seeing ghosts, which is the exact title of the... the exact original title, Seeing Ghosts, that, that's the, the, you know, if, if you just read the, the original title of the Chinese version in... I'm not gonna go out on a limb. I'm, I'm just gonna say the, the Chinese language that the original title was written in, you know, seeing ghosts. That concept to a Chinese person is like, you know, it's it's not, again, it's not scary in the way of like a slasher where there's a killer coming right for you. It's, it's, it's more of a sadness than, than a fear of death. And this movie isn't about sadness. This is, this movie is about like boo jump scares and like such a big part of what makes the Chinese one interesting is that the, the ghosts are not out to hurt. Like, there are, there are times where they can come across as very threatening, but you actually kind of get the sense that they don't know that they're ghosts. Like, they're just like, like there's this, there's a part where this, this ghost girl asks the, uh, yeah, asks the protagonist, why are you in my seat? She doesn't seem to, like like she she gets she gets angry about it, but she doesn't seem to want to hurt the protagonist. She's just I I you kind of get the sense that she's in denial. Like she's she doesn't accept that she's died already, and her getting increasingly angry is her gradual realization. I must be dead. That's the only explanation for why. Okay, it's not the only explanation, but that, you know, that would explain why is there someone in my seat who, when I call her out, is confused rather than apologetic. You know, she's, the, the protagonist isn't like, oh, crap, this, this must be her seat. I'm, I'm just going to move to another seat. No, she's like, what are you talking about? Who are you? And at that point, this, this ghost, you know, becomes yeah becomes increasingly aware that they must be dead and the that anger comes like comes out at the protagonist but in this movie like i'll grant that like it's not necessarily that the ghosts seem to be like trying to to hurt sydney but just you know there's there's an explanation for why it like jumps out at her or like slams something or you know but that explanation is just there to facilitate this bad jump scare you know i, I don't think that jump scares have to be bad I, I think it would be hard to deny that the original alien has jump scares but they work you know they they're one of the really big things is those jump scares tend to come after a lot of buildup. It's not just that something jumps out or something. It's that, like, the, the, the characters in Alien will be, like, anticipating something. And then, you know, for, for minutes, and then suddenly something jumps. That's scary. But in this movie, like, there are times where it's just, like, we, we get a few seconds to realize, okay, there's something a little off, and then the jump scare. Yeah. That brings us to the characters. So, Jessica Alba plays Sydney Wells, a violin the violinist who regains her vision after being blind since childhood. 
I don't like criticizing Jessica Alba. She seems like a very nice person in real life. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I love movies. I love video games. But, like, if you can only have one or the other, like, the more celebrities that are legitimately good people, maybe not as talented, but at least good people. Like, I hear that Keanu Reeves is a super, just the nicest person, apparently. And a lot of people say he isn't. I, I think he, it just needs to be the right kind of role for him. And he can be very compelling, but anyway. You know, if, if you can only get one or the other, yeah, it is better for a lot of celebrities who have a lot of wealth and influence. You know, it's better that they're nice than talented, but, you know, awful people. It's it's great when you can get both. You know, Jennifer Lawrence, Brie Larson, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> but... At the end of the day, I want to preface it by saying I, I think she's putting in effort in this movie. I, I when, when I look at her acting in this movie, it does seem like she is... I, I, I don't feel like she's just sleepwalking through it, uh, you know. And at times, she does a, a decent enough job. But overall, she simply isn't that good of an actress and the reason they cast her over more talented actors is because they believe that the audience cares more about the female lead's appearance than talent and I mean for a chunk of the audience they appear to be right a lot of user reviews say sure the movie's bad but at least she's hot from one horror fan to another Stop doing that. It's one of the reasons the genre isn't taken as seriously, and that's very frustrating considering some of the best movies ever made are horror movies. You know, 1978 Halloween. I already mentioned 1982 The Thing. The Babadook. 1986 The Fly. You know, incredible movies. A lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll never experience one of these movies because of the negative stereotypes and the stereotype that female actors in horror movies are more frequently attractive than talented is one of the most most pervasive and for a number of them sadly true there there are a, a chunk you know i already mentioned slasher movies i hate to admit it but there are a chunk of those that where where they yeah, where where it's someone who's talented but not attractive. And and it's not like like come on, John Carpenter gave you a perfect model with the original Halloween. You know, I I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. I swear I will not spend forever trying to remember it. Her name is I am going to go ahead and find it on my device real quick. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis is a national treasure, and I will not hear one negative word about her. It's it's even even in that first one, she's like 20 years old, and she's already completely convincing as just yeah i'm not going to claim that like i i i will agree that maybe the uh not annie but the third one the the one who's playing like vapid blonde you know that is maybe a little excessive a little oh, okay we get it she's supposed to be like a dumb blonde i i think annie does is is quite convincing as well the yeah but but yeah and and right some people conflate an actress being attractive with her also not being a good actress that she only gets by on looks i completely disagree 
um, you know, a short list of conventionally attractive actresses that I think could have done a great job in this role are Scarlett Johansson, Rebecca Hall, Jessica Biel, and, you know, Jessica Biel, ah, uh, let's see, was, yes, yes, I haven't seen it myself, but I believe she was in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, and I'm almost certain that one had come out by the, maybe she didn't want the role, because she didn't want to, to just be thought of as, yeah. Scarlett Johansson, I mean, she did, there, there's a horror aspect to Eight-Legged Freaks, which also had come out before this, so again, she might maybe didn't want to be typecast, yeah. I'm actually not 100% certain if Rebecca Hall has done horror. Now, in the uh, behind the scenes on the DVD, Jessica Alba talks about how she worked on learning, you know, how how to look like you know how to play a violin and says she never did sound good but she did end up looking convincing and that you know pointing out that's what man you know pointing out with a smile that's what matters and and that is yeah i th i think that's probably i think it if if she could stick to roles where she's just basically like and and yeah when she's just being nice in this when she's smiling you know like yeah she has a warm smile you get the sense that she cares about people those parts work in this movie the the she's not very convincing when she's trying to pretend you know when she's acting like she's scared that's where it, you know that that's where she she starts having problems and that's a big problem for a horror movie lead you know, I if if she would just if she would stick to movies where she just plays someone who's sweet all the time and maybe has to do some sort of physical like I know she I, I don't know if she still dances but she used to and she's danced in several movies and that's like the the two Sin City movies she did her physical performance. Yeah, you know, she does, you you believe that she makes a living doing this, this dance, you know, yeah, doing these dance routines. And yeah, like, I, I mean, I'm not an expert, but it looked like she knew how to play the violin in this. That's something she is legitimately good at. She can, you know, like, like a, a lot of actors, a lot of actors who are otherwise talented are not good at physically imitating something that they're not used to doing they're you know they can act in that like the way they say a line or their eyes the 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 you know the, the look in their eyes is completely convincing but they don't know how to you know yeah so if if just yeah and yeah, so in the behind the scenes, she also said she learned what it is like to not be able to see. She put on something called a sleeping mask that completely covers your eyes. And like when you when you hear her explain the character, she clearly completely understands. Like there's no sense of just like, yeah, you know, that she completely understands it. It's it's just when she has to act like she is scared of something you know i don't know she's she's just not very convincing for that and yeah according to wikipedia alba spent much time with the blind soprano jessica but chicha to learn about how blind people lived used the white cane red braille etc and Watch Mojo did a, you know, she was included on a top 10 something. And they point out she's bad at emoting. And the horror movie genre requires emoting. She's the one we experience the horror through. Yeah. And.
yeah, her character at times comes across as kind of selfish, like the the she kind of makes the you know it's yeah it's it's very american horror movie lead she will express passion about something and basically expect everyone else to drop everything they're doing and just focus on making sure that she and I get it. I get it. She's seeing ghosts. It's it's terrifying. But she is kind of acting like she's the only person who has any problems. And it's just... Yeah. And the... You know, they do the, the fake nudity scene thing where, you know... Yeah, it's just... They, they have, like... I don't know if it's it technically qualifies as a shower scene. I guess it's more of a post shower scene, but yeah, it's it's just it's ridiculous. Like it has absolutely no place in a movie like this. I'm I don't have a problem with sexuality and horror, and you know again the uh, Halloween 1978 does a legitimately good job. I suppose, can I say, without spoiling, I, yeah, it's, you know, a, a major character in that movie is very, has, has a reaction to other people's sexuality, and that's why it's, you know, in that movie, it's not just there, you know, I'm not going to, like, it might at least partially be there because the, you know, that would get more viewers, that would get more asses and seats, as it were, but there is a, a point to it as well. You know, there is a theme of sexuality in that movie. Who is and who isn't having sex matters in that movie. Now, according to IMDb Trivia, Jessica Alba declared that while she had been wanting to do a horror thriller for a long time, she did not want to do a slasher where each character dies in a more outrageous and bloody way, whereas she found this film to be elegant and very well written, and her character Sydney to be elaborate and very interesting, thus enabling her to stre stretch her acting abilities. And again, I 100% that, yeah, it's, you know, it is possible to do slashers well. Once again, 1978's Halloween is technically... Uh, I guess it's more of a proto-slasher. The, the Scream movies. The, the first, you know, Screams... I mean, honestly... Yeah. Scream 1, 5... I forgot. I, I ranked them recently. I think, yeah. Scream 5, 1... Two, four, and three in that order, it's, you know, from from best to worst. There, you know, several of those are excellent movies, so it's possible to do well. But your average slasher is very much a fast food, you know, a, a product. And even some of the people who worked on making them will will say that that's the case. So, quoting some fellow critics. Jessica Alba may be easy on the eyes, but a lack of dramatic heft makes her hard on the eye. I'm going to confess something I never thought I would admit. Jessica Alba isn't that bad. This is not to be confused with Jessica Alba is good, which would be a lie. When she's playing panicked and scared, she's... convincing? Okay, he felt that way. As usual, he has problems with more serious dramatic scenes, and there are a few too many of these for her to sell through the eye. She's also immeasurably helped by the fact that her co-stars, Alessandro Nivola and Parker Posey, apparently gave their performances while heavily sedated. Parker the Alba outacts them, which is more than a, which is more a commentary on their work than hers, but the fringe benefit of merely watching her takes away some of the sting of enduring her serious dialogue with Nivola's comatose psychiatrist. They're shooting the camera on Jessica's ass in so many angles, it's really pathetic. In a scene where she's getting into a vehicle and the camera is on her ass. Jessica Alba, as Sydney gives, I think anyway, 
her best performance in a movie so far. She has to carry the whole movie. If she's not convincing, then the movie will fall apart. But she holds the movie well. And Vince is not only a blind woman, but also a violinist. And when the creepy events start happening, she conveys the terror required well. Just Galvo was alright, but I would have gone with someone like Naomi Watts or Kate Hudson. Very true. That they were also done great. Alba's performance, while slightly marred in places by over-emoting, was overall her best to date, and actually a strength to the movie. She makes Sydney a blind violinist who begins to experience terrifying visions of tragedies after receiving vision-restoring surgery, a believable person to care about. So yeah, Parker Posey plays Helen Wells, Sydney's sister. Very thankless role, she's very underutilized. Alessandro Nivola plays Paul Faulkner, and quoting from the critics, Alessandro Nivola plays such an unconvincing doctor that I actually dread to have someone like him involved in any post-surgical recovery process in real life. Shouting at your patients and telling them that they are wrong a couple of days after they've had cornea transplants is not a good bedside manner. Nivola's performance, in my opinion, is what lacked in this film. His role was large enough to make his lackluster performance detract from the film. You never feel that he's connected to the situations in the movie, and his personality always seems forced consistently throughout the film. Yeah, and it's... I, I think it's basically just there for, like, drama. I... Like, not very many people would behave the way he is. Like, again, you know, shouting at a patient. Just... Yeah. And Rade Sebaja plays Simon McCullough, also a pretty thankless role, very underutilized. I'm never going to complain about seeing him in a movie, but this really is a waste of his time and talent. And... Yeah, Fernando Romero, Romero plays Ana Cristina Martinez, also a very thankless role, but she gives in a really strong performance, actually. And Rachel Ticodin plays Rosa Martinez, also very thankless, incredibly underutilized. It's like, what happened? Like, she, she was so great in some of these action movies, it just, yeah. And Chloe Grace Moretz as Alicia Millstone. She does a really great job, appearing to have very little energy because of the tumor in hospital stay. Considering she's otherwise known for high energy and intense performances, like in Kick Ass. And yes, I'll, you know, obviously there are years between the the you know the first Kick Ass movie and this, but the. You know, other, other stuff I've seen from right around the same time, you know, she, yeah, she has these high energy, you know, she, she, yeah, it's, it's a very different performance than what else I've seen. Yeah, and I am going to briefly quote my old review. Why is Parker Posey playing normal? Did she walk onto the wrong set? And another fellow critic, the acting was below par for most of the cast, with characters coming off as two-dimensional for the sake of moving the plot along. And yeah, the the diversity is decent. You know, we have a female lead, some major characters who are female, young, old, Latina. So that is really, you know, this could very easily have been. A very white dude heavy movie but yeah they they do a decent job of yeah so the the dialogue the yeah the dialogue is not quotable or memorable and I suppose at times characters in this do talk the way that they do in real life, at, at times. There are 12 entries in the MVP quote section, which is really not very much for, like, there is, I, I would have expected two or three times more, considering 
of the expository dialogue and the small talk dialogue in this, but yeah. All 12 are bad. My fellow critic says, horrible, horrible dialogue. Yeah, so that brings us to the cinematography. Jeffrey Jur was the DP. He has 20 movie credits in total. And 24 episodes of Dexter between 2012 and 13. The only movies other than this that I've seen him DP are Live Wire and Joyride. Those are filmed well, for sure. Not the best movies ever made, but certainly filmed well. And the... Yeah, the... the Like the, the Chinese original, although to a lesser extent, there are point of view shots where the, you know, yeah, the, the, there'll be, there'll be something out of focus and will, there, there'll be like a figure in the shot that we can't quite make out and we're wondering, is that a ghost kind of thing? And, yeah, quoting my old review again briefly. The editing and cinematography aren't devoid of skill, but they're overstylized with, for example, a handful of quick flashes of meaningless, freaky sights. Quoting fellow critics here, The latest American remake of an Eastern import in which the thrills have been hopelessly squandered in translation, replaced with distracting rapid-fire camera work and thunderous bumps in the night that reflect a kind of creative desperation. Because the scares can only really come from her point of view, and they seem to happen only when it's dark, they become easily telegraphed whenever we get this kind of shot. And into the woes is the use of out of focus scenes, which convey Alpha getting accustomed to her new eyes, but feel to us like trying to watch the ring on a bad pirate VHS copy. One of the biggest disappointments with the eye is the filming. Half the film is intentionally out of focus, while the quarter is filmed by someone running with a camera, read jumpy and nausea and tusing. And the rest was standard filming with a couple of special effects. Yeah. Which brings us to the editing. Patrick Lussier edited this. He has 19 movie credits total. Let's see. So yeah, other than this, the ones I've seen are My Bloody Valentine, Red Eye, which has spot on like that that is excellent editing that that movie lives or dies by the acting chemistry and editing and all three are excellent Dracula 2000 Scream 3 Halloween H2O Scream 2 Mimic Scream 1 and Wes Craven's New Nightmare so yeah, you know, these are all well-edited movies. Okay, maybe not Dracula 2000, but the rest of them. Yeah. And really, the, the editing in this isn't bad, it's misguided. You know, I, it's probably the biggest problem with the editing is that this is in too much of a hurry when it should be like building and milking things. You know, if if you watch the the Chinese elevator scene, and then this movie's elevator scene, you know, just I'm I'm pretty sure they're both here on YouTube. You know, watch them. Make sure you watch the Chinese one first, and you know, preferably watch the entire movie. But if not, at least this scene is a really good example. And just notice the editing. Notice how. The Chinese one really stretches it out and makes it just unbearable, and we just so badly want it to, to you know, to, to get to skip skip to the end. But the I th I guess you know earlier in this video I talked about how this movie is shorter than it originally was. It's possible that they originally you know stretch out the scares more. But all they'd have to do was take out, like, if they removed two of the 
bigger scenes of, of scares. Remove two of them and take the time that those took up and put them into the other scare scenes. Then each scary scene in this could spend time and build up instead of going by too fast. So, quoting fellow critics, you'd think that a horror story concerned with the unreliability of sight might at least try to generate scares with the use of visual trickery. A total lack of creativity, suspense, and origina or originality. It is a pity that Ms. Alba chose this role, and it is, as it was merely a shell of the original film. Every scene was reproduced in a typical U.S. dumbed-down format, with typical cheap Friday the 13th scares thrown in. This version ironically lost sight of the original version, vision of the Pang Brothers classic. Maybe I need my eyesight. Check. Instead, they change key plot elements to add to suspense, i.e. American audiences don't can't think, so you have to hold up a sign that says screen. Do yourself and others a favor and rent, or even better, buy a copy of the original. You will not be disappointed. Sadly, the same cannot be said for yet another cheap, unimaginative 80s camp pile of garbage ripoff in the mold of the grudge, hide and seek, and dark lore. Too many nightmare shots, very true. Holy crap, like, I don't even know how, yeah, I don't know how you end up with this many. There are just too many of those waking up from nightmare moments and the clock ticking around 1.05 a.m. The entire film was less than inspired with each scene bland and pointless. The special effects are pretty good, and, you know, like I said in the my, my video on the original Chinese, one of the only criticisms I have for the, the Chinese one is that they did push the CG past what it could reproduce credibly. You know, you look at this movie, almost all of the CG is legitimately convincing you know you can talk about like some of the designs again you know don't uh, no, not Dumbledore what, what the heck's his name wow I have definitely not had enough sleep last night Voldemort the Voldemort lookalikes you know there's definitely like that's 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 a choice but they're convincing, you know, like, d deep down you know, okay, so that's a human actor playing a recently deceased person. That's definitely something that came out of a computer, but it looks convincing. It looks like they're actually there. And I, I am very surprised to report the following, but the special effects actually don't take over the movie. I really, like, if this was, you know, yeah, before the first time I watched it, I really thought that it would. There's some really great stunts. So, this was filmed in some parts of New Mexico, California, Canada, yeah, and they they do a, a good job of making you like when they go to a different place, it doesn't feel like. A set, except for the parts that are sets, obviously. Scrolling through my notes here, trying to avoid. Dead air. Here we go. So, the music and score. 
was handed by Marco Beltrami, who has no less than 104 movie credits as composer. So, yeah. And he certainly has done some, some really great scores. Like Logan... Scream 4... Red Eye... Blade 2... The first Resident Evil movie. Bad movie, good soundtrack. The Scream Trilogy. The Faculty, yeah. And the first Mimic. Yeah, and, and he does a, a decent enough job here. You know, the... the yeah, one, one critic calls it eerie. I'm going to briefly quote my old review. The bland and manipulative score is kind enough to let us know when this is meant to be creepy. You know, like the laugh track on a sitcom. But yeah, it could it could definitely be a lot worse. The sound design is good. Like the... I've made... I've cracked some jokes at the expense of the snarling, you know... Voldemort, and I stand by them, but the snarling is, a, a, like, it is legitimately creepy sounding, and it legitimately feels like it comes out of that being that we're seeing. Did not mean for that to rhyme. I did this time. And... Yeah, so the best element of the movie is that the ending is legitimately decently handled. The worst aspect is a tie between Jessica Alba's acting and the filmmakers not understanding the appeal of the original that they're remaking. The thing I was most worried about for this movie was the there was Americanizing the original that that would completely destroyed and the movie lived down to my expectations I was most looking forward to the ending which I had heard was good and the movie exceeded my expectations so the trailers give away at least a little too much I like the music in at least one of the trailers but the yeah the they do give you a decent idea of what the movie is like, because the trailer is also full of jump scares. The cover and poster don't give too much away, and they do give you a decent idea of what the movie is like. You know, you can, yeah, you can see it up there. You know, this blue-tinted, sad, solemn shot of Jessica Alba, you know, facing a window that's, you know, drenched in rain, and yeah, she, she can't see. Now, I found almost no YouTube videos about this movie other than trailers and clips and makes a lot of sense it's a movie that doesn't make that much sense to come back to years after and you know i'm primarily doing it because i have things to say about it in the spoiler sections you know like the let's see in 2008 i'm almost certain youtube existed but, like, regular people weren't putting up video, like, okay, maybe vlogs, but not, like, in-depth, um, like, not the kind of review where you need to use footage from the things, you know, some, something that is carefully edited and took a really long time to edit. 
So Rotten Tomatoes has this, this has a 22% on the tomato meter. This is, this is Morbius numbers. And the audience score is 43%. So this is not a case of Venom. Yeah, so the critics' consensus is featuring wooden performances and minimal scares. The Eye is another tedious remake of an Asian horror film. So the... Yeah, the 22% is based on 78 reviews. The average rating was 4.20 out of 10. And only 17 were fresh. The other 61 were rotten. Who are the 17 who gave it a passing grade? I don't even know how you get... Anyway. And the audience score... Yeah, it, over 250,000 ratings. And the average rating was 3.1 out of 5. And on Metacritic, it had a 36 out of 100. When I checked. 3.2 out of 10 based on users and last user reviews when I checked were from September 18th 2020 so I'm not the only person at all returning to this movie this long after and 13 Metacritic re reviews and 31 user reviews which has all also like Usually that's way, way higher. So on IMDb, it has only 173 user reviews. A number of the ones voted most useful are positive. The very top one is negative, and there are other negative ones as well. Of the 170 links in the IMDb external review section, 50 of them were in English and, you know, not dead links. Yeah, so it has a 5.4 out of 10 on IMDb based on votes by 53,013 IMDb users and... Yeah, so the 23.8% gave it 6, 223 gave it 5, 14.2 gave it 7, 11.9 gave it 4. Yeah. That basically, that's, yeah makes sense okay so yeah the um, it's hard to recommend this to to be I, I guess if the if you just really want to see Jessica Alba in something whether that's because you are attracted to her or whether you you know whether you think that she is like you in some way you know there are definitely much much worse Jessica Alba movies out there Now, the, um, yeah, so the, the DVD, not, I, I'm not sure this is true of every DVD that come, that, that the movie comes in, but the, yeah, yeah, when, when you buy it, if you make that mistake, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to talk you out of that, but these are some of the things that you can see if might be on yours. There's one called Becoming Sydney, it's four and a half minutes. Just got to talking about preparing for the character. Shadow World, Seeing the Dead, which is eight minutes. A parapsychologist talking about psychic powers in real life. 
the casting crew talk about some of their memory. Birth of the Shadow Man, 1 minute 30 seconds. They talk about the Grim Reaper, how they did the effects, and we meet the guy who plays him. An explosive finale, 6 minutes. And they go over the. Yeah, how they planned and executed the climax. And. It, right, a uh, one minute trailer and 11 minutes of deleted scenes. And some of the deleted scenes are just normal character stuff. They're fine. Some of them are deleted scares, no better or worse than the ones they left in the movie. I think the reason for deleting at least some of these is that they would have bumped the movie from PG-13 to an R rating. But yeah. Excuse me. The If the movie sounds appealing and you find it on sale, yeah, I, I think it makes sense to spend money on the DVD. I, I I'm glad that I was able to watch the, the special features. So, I am, yeah, this, this movie boils down to, I, I, yes, I rate this five bland remakes that misunderstand the appeal of the original out of ten. If it wasn't so well shot and edited, it would be a 2 or 3 out of 10. And it will be a very long time before I watch this movie again. Yeah. This is one movie that we all should ghost. That brings us to the... Thoughts, spoiler sections, and so yeah, the, the rest of the video contains spoilers, including for the Chinese original. You can find it by searching by title and my channel. So yeah, the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of analysis, some of MSCPA, riff tracks, and other jokes. Especially jokes in the very next thoughts section. Time codes for all the sections are in the description box. Section red for this is thoughts on while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. The section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. So. Diving right in to note taken while watching. I didn't see that, neither did I. Remember the Daredevil movie that everybody hated? Pepperidge Farm remembers. I will grant when Sydney uses the violin as a ukulele to play happy birthday to you, that smile does come across as completely genuine. This is as adorkable as Alba is in real life. Honestly, if I saw her doing that at an award show or something, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Tell me what you see. No good reason to American Americanize an election Chinese movie. If I can get the punchline out without stepping on a word. She sees a ghostly figure right after they uncover her eyes. Calm down, movie. You'll get to the ghost part soon enough. Why would there even be a ghost in there? Did he get lost? Or is the idea supposed to be that a patient died during a normal consultation? I mean, this isn't like what's what's it called like a surgery operating operating room whatever you know it's not the ER it's places where people die in hospitals I mean I guess it's possible that someone had a heart attack during a normal consultation maybe when they were told how much they'd have to pay and that it was all out of pocket 
and the tearing has stopped? I think so, yeah, which is good because I still can't cry pretty. To be clear, I'm making fun of the director, Tim Story, for telling her to cry pretty, not just Galva for... It's, yeah. When will I be able to see more clearly? When the rain is gone. The first time I watched this movie, I really thought that more of the characters that throw the surprise party for Sydney were going to show up later. I mean, I think the the guy who runs the, the elevator is in there. I guess the idea is just to have a scene where she's overwhelmed because this is an American horror movie. We can't go two seconds without a scene overpowering the audience. Were you listening to me, Sydney? Or were you looking at the woman buying a pineapple? I'm going to show you the world as it truly is. Like, some of this I barely even have to, to change for it to sound like... Yeah. I don't hate that the movie has the explanation of how the input from her eyes may overwhelm her play over scenes of them walking and the audience seeing different things. I'm almost 100% certain that in the Chinese one, it was just them like sitting in a room talking, which worked really well. But I do think this is a good alternative to just repeating that since now the scene matches what she's being told. There is a lot of in visual input for the audience as well. Have you seen my report card? My dad is going to be so mad at me. He's always telling me to stop over explaining simple concepts in unnecessary American horror remakes. Seriously, just to have the kid ask if she's seen the report card. I know this movie was made so the 13 year old can watch it, but even 13 year olds can put together that a missing report card might mean an angry parent. Honestly, even a child could, which is how the ghost child knew. And Sydney sees the means of suicide Anna Christina used, which tells the audience members that are paying attention that there's a connection between Sydney and the start of the movie. And it tells audience members that are not paying attention that at some point in this movie, something actually interesting is going to happen. I do appreciate that Sydney is the one who explains the concept that she has to learn to interpret sensory input, making her a more active character. So it's pretty stupid that the movie has the ghost bang against the door when Sydney sees the fire vision, but at least they did put in the bare minimum of effort to have an explanation for why a ghost would be doing that. Like, he's trying to get out through the door, so, you know, obviously he's gonna, like, be banging on it. Sydney wakes up, sees there are marks from the burning man on the on her arm because the Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street movies were popular. I mean, they fade out of existence almost immediately, so what was even the point? Like, there's a reason why Freddy leaves a mark on you. It, it conveys to the character and the audience that Freddy's, like, it's not just scary stuff that happens in dreams. What Freddy does to you can affect the real world. But apparently that wasn't what happened here. You know, because it faded right after anyway. So it's just like, I mean, people liked it. You know, that's, that's, that's true. We did like it. We, we do very much like it in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But this movie does not understand why other movies are you know, well liked. Man, that restaurant is lit. Or it was, anyway. Sydney, it's me, it's me. I know it is, that's why I'm screaming. So the restaurant scene in the original movie was just another ghost sign. I, did I already mention that? I'm, yeah, yeah, I mentioned that I'm spoiling this movie and the Chinese original. Yeah, just another ghost sighting. There was nothing about the restaurant burning down. I guess the idea here is supposed to be that it's like how her apartment is changing. Let's see. Yeah, you know, it changes, you know, from what's it, what, what's, 
which they're now back to what there was before. The restaurant it changed from what it was before to what it is now, but it still feels cheap. It feels like a cheat. The rest of the movie is about how she can see people who have died. There's a, like, it's not the same thing to be able to see a place before something was done to it. It's, it's like, it's not the, like the building has a soul. I see dead people. Okay, movie, we get it. You are aware that there are other movies featuring supernatural beings that have died. If you're not going to comment on them, stop bringing them up. Like, throughout this movie, I'm already thinking, wow, there's like 20 better horror movies that I could be watching. You don't have to keep giving me ideas. The elevator scene in this is so inferior. It's in way too much of a hurry. It's too busy in its editing. Like, such a big part of why we love the original is that it does use this thing of, like, a ghost, a, uh, an elevator being slow, and, and it's, it really gets a lot out of that. And then here, it's just, no, it's a quick elevator ride. And the scene of the kid asking for his report card, including the suicide, is so much less effective here. And, of course, Sydney breaks a window. I'm pretty sure it's the law that an American horror movie or action movie has to have the lead break glass at some point. And then the kid shows up down the hall. They have this obnoxious use of fade and slow-mo effect, I guess, to communicate to the audience. Yes. You're right. This is, in fact... A ghost. It doesn't make it any scarier, and it's also like, it's not really scary because like it's it's uncomfortable, it's depressing, but an eight-year-old like committing suicide like that, that's not something that makes you scared of dying yourself. You know, that's that's just not how that works. Again, like. In the Chinese original, when, you know, he he lives through, uh, he re-experiences his suicide, and then he's still there. You know, I, f I forget if it's the same scene, or if it's if uh, after, late, wh whatever, but, you know. And then here, it's like, ah, uh, a booga booga boo, scary slow-mo, fady ghost. It's an eight-year-old committing suicide. It's not, we're not, like, ah, get away from me. He's dangerous. It's... Now, the DVD had some problems. It stopped playing at certain points. So, on this particular viewing of the movie, I was not able to watch. You know, when when the movie was 15 minute, 50 minutes into the movie, it, it suddenly stopped playing. I tried to play from 55 minutes. It wouldn't. Tried to play from an hour, it wouldn't try to play from an hour and two minutes, and it would. So I won't be commenting on what was there, but you know, I have watched it before, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this video. I don't remember that much of specifically what happened. I you know, that's where the um what's it called? It's where Sydney looks in the mirror and it's Anna Christina's face, which I remember that as being handled fine, and certainly, you know, you can, like, the actress playing Anna Christina is a way better actress. The graffiti outside. You think people had better things to do? What a useless and unnecessary line. Is, is this like a contract thing? Did they really think that we needed someone to point out that the reason there was graffiti was that people thought she was a witch? Like... It's like, that really is, like, this is, this is how little respect these movies have for the average American teenage moviegoer. First, the, you know, Paul talks in, in Spanish to some, uh, Mexican, to some of the kids, and one of the kids says, Bruja. Then Paul tells Sydney, Bruja. It, it means witch. And then, or, or wait, no, no, he said, 
Yeah, he said she was like a witch, some, something like that, you know. But we just heard the word Bruja, which we also heard at the start. So it's like, okay, I wonder. No, no, they're they're like shouting ice cream, ice cream. They, they just because they're, you know, they're attacking someone that they think is a witch doesn't mean that the one word they keep chanting means witch. Okay, like, don't be so stereotypical. And then you know they see the the graffiti and like, Bruja. It means witch. And then, like, they thought your daughter was a witch. So the graffiti outside. Easy, Sherlock. I, I Let's not. Don't, don't go nuts here. And, and Christina's mother is suddenly hit with a bad case of plot contrivance. So that Sydney can be alone when she sees Anna Christina's place in the suicide repeating the suicide scene you know is fairly well handled good build up legitimately tense after sydney put her hand on the window you know the the car with the little girl she starts having a flashback but why did she put her hand on the window like that i mean it doesn't say not jenny's boat you know, Kate and Leo are nowhere around. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she was having a pre-flashback flashback. You're scaring the little girl. Scaring the little girl? And the build-up and tension. Build-up tension and suspense are pretty good in the scene by the border. There's a bomb on your bus. Wait here, sweetie. What is it, mommy? A Karen, it looks like. Stand back. I'm going to break the window. Close your eyes. You wouldn't want to get foreshadowing in them. Talk about an overdone explosion at the end. Yikes. And that brings us to the final section. Notes taken before watching. So... Yeah, okay. I guess I copied in a lot of stuff that I was not. Okay, so the movie brings up cellular memory. I'm just very briefly going to comment, uh, you know, in the IMDb fact, it's the frequently asked questions. Yeah, it says cellular memory is the belief that living tissues have the capacity to store memories, emotions, and characteristics, and that these can be passed during tissue transplants from donor to recipient also known as false memory syndrome cellular memory is considered a pseudoscientific theory by the medical community as there is no evidence to support it it's one of those things that like make people feel good because it sounds oh uh, yeah that that sounds you know yeah And, yeah, so I'm going to briefly quote from the critics. Probably goes without saying that the self-involved privileged Sydney would pay scant attention to the violence and poverty that make up, make up life in Anas Pueblo.
the Death Escort guys, evil looking Grim Reapers that no one has ever reported from near death experiences. The Escort, while kept silent and always blurred in the original, roared at Alpha in this one and looked like a zombie from I Am Legend. Very true. She only has a few minutes of scream time, but relies heavily on body language and facial expressions and does good doing that. I, th I think that's Anna Maria. Anna Christina. Let's talk about. Great job till they ruined the end. 7 out of 10. I was surprised by how closely the movie followed the original, despite a few changes that weren't a big deal. For an hour and 20 minutes, I was excited by how well they did, because we all know how Americans ruined foreign horror. Then in the last 10 minutes, they ruined the movie for me. The ending was weak and not very emotional. And they tried to make a happy ending, and it took all the feeling out of the movie. The original ending is so much better, and you really feel a sense of shock. Say, I can't believe that happened, which is what Asian horror is about. How the makers of this followed it so closely for over an hour and ruined the end. The ending is amazing. That takes some real effort. Overall, it's a little decent horror, but could have been so much more. The shadows are neutral in the original. They are guides to souls and they do not care about the heroine. Now they are scary because they do not want to be seen. Worst of all, the movie is totally wrecked at the end. Poor, pathetic Americans could not possibly go to sleep without some sort of happy end. So Jessica Alba saves people in the end, at the end. In the original, no one is saved. The heavy mood of the original is based on the idea... Even if you see the future, you'll change nothing, a.k.a. Cassandra Complex. A ghost restaurant? The only good thing I can say about this god-awful piece of garbage is that they kept the creepy elevator man in there. He was awesome, but really, a ghost restaurant. I will not get over that ever. The implication, I think, was supposed to be that, like, the woman who taught, like, she caught maybe, maybe her husband doing something awful, so she burnt the restaurant they owned to the ground as revenge or something. Again, that, you know, that works. Alba's dreams suddenly become premonitions, and it destroys the whole point of the original donor being cursed with premonitions via sight. Having oh, yeah, having on the Chinese version of the eye, I want to see the American remake of the film and compare it to the original. And the remake delivered as I expected a total disappointment. Some scenes, however, just stayed close enough. To its original predecessor, but the scares were just plain cheap. Having loved the "Why are you sitting in my chair?" scene in the Chinese. Oh, did I accidentally click? Oh, there we go. That's better. Having loved the yeah, I don't know if it was super noticeable, but I apparently accidentally clicked off the spoiler sign. Anyway, yeah, "Why are you sitting in my chair?" scene. As one Carmen was learning calligraphy, I couldn't always see what they did in this one. The scene took place in a crowded restaurant. I couldn't realize that the woman who was standing in front of Sidney Wells was a ghost until she looked around to realize nobody else acknowledged this apparition, and the scare was a total cheap spoof. The ghost in the original chain in the Chinese version comes toward Wong Kar a bit slower, but her appearance makes her creepier. That was scary. The loud track in it adds the kick to chill my spine every time I watch that scene. Moreover, the death of Ying Ying was saddening for Wong Kar since she had a good friendship with the little girl and it made the drama great. Plus, it helped in convincing Dr. Lo to believe his nephew's claim that Wong Kar could see ghosts. The scene with Sidney Wells having seen 
Alicia Munslow walk away with the demon. Yes, I called it the demon. Out through the door was just quick and cool, almost insignificant, as if she didn't even care. I'm surprised Alicia didn't just tell Sydney, see you later, alligator, on her way out. I could not tell whether she was dreaming or if she actually got up either. All I could do at this point was just roll my eyes, almost shout curses at the movie screen of disappointment. But I wanted to see how the ending sequence was executed in the remake. I urge viewers to check out the original on the offhand, off chance they haven't seen it. As an absolute trash is this one. Thrash is this one. Case in point, the celebrated elevator scene in the original is one of those sequences that I had to watch behind splayed fingers, a truly disturbing horror experience enhanced by subtlety and chilling camp uh, soundtracks. Here it's merely silly utilizing ludicrous CGI work of ghosts floating through walls and the like. I can't help but feel like there's um yeah, what's it called? Condescending attitude in the movie towards Mexicans. Like saying, oh, they're superstitious, naive, hateful. You know, the, the persecution of Anna, Anna Christina could easily have taken place in a rural town in a southern state. But they knew conservatives would get angry. But a lot of Americans don't think very highly of Mexicans. So... Yeah, so the, the I'm definitely not saying that the American movie is better or that they generally are. That's not the saying, that's the opposite of what the saying is. The original movie is Chinese and the American remake, which largely follows the plot structure and details of the mystery fairly closely a lot of the way are different in ways that are in you know part some of the ways that they're different are cultural the american lead is a more active character who goes out and tries to find you know determine what's going on with the chinese one kind of accepts a bad situation and it takes men to convince her that sh they should get to the bottom of the mystery And, you know, to be fair, if the American movie had been made decades back, the the female lead would also have been passive. Again, I'm not criticizing Chinese culture, merely observing, stating observation. Yeah. Another example is one scene in a Chinese movie, the female lead meets another person who can also see ghosts, and then... This woman exits the scene right after having disclosed that, and we don't see her again, which does not happen in the American movie. You don't meet that character at all. American movie, without a doubt, would have dedicated some time to the lead trying to find out more about why she can see ghosts by talking to the woman, who also can. I read one person saying in between scenes off screen, she gets more of an explanation realizes that it's just that some people can see ghosts. I, I guess I could see that. I just, I, you know, yeah, it might just be cultural. I did want it at least a little bit more spelled out, personally. So, yeah, the American version of the movie clearly does not understand why the original worked. It was scary without having to assault our senses, where this one, this movie is paralyzed by fear at the thought that the audience might be bored for two seconds. Where the ghosts in the original don't do things that are direct, that, you know, aggressive things directly to the protagonist or the characters and we don't necessarily see their face in clear detail in this they're more clearly dangerous and what they sound like and look like and despite that yeah despite that the plot structure is very similar 
and the things that were credible in the Chinese movie aren't in the American one. Let's see. I wrote that Sydney should completely break down by constantly seeing such scary ghosts. I didn't expand upon it, so maybe that was all I had to say about it. So the you know both the Chinese and American movies have a number of flashbacks where the protagonist sees something horrible, but in the Chinese film it leads to finding the person who had visions when she died, her eyes were you know put in the protagonist. In the American version, the flashbacks are warnings of things that haven't happened yet, like the warning she gave is when she was alive, something that does actually happen at the very end, and so there is this idea that despite all the pain that this young woman felt through these visions and her unheeded warnings, even in death she kept trying to warn people and finally one of the warnings were heeded. And she saved lives, which does provide a sort of arc, not saying it's better, but it's more appealing to us Western audiences instead of history tragically repeating itself. We learn from mistakes and experience. Now, right, so a significant difference between the endings of these two movies. The original, yeah, the original and this American remake, both movies are fairly aimless for most of it. Well, the female lead in each is having a lot of interactions with people who are dead and Grim Reapers. They don't really do anything for most of it. They encounter them as they're just going through a normal day. A lot of it, nobody believes them, so nothing is really done to change anything that brings to the endings. With both movies, it does kind of come out of nowhere. It's the first time she's able to see someone who is about to die before they die and has a chance to warn them. With the old woman in the hospital, it appears that the female lead becomes aware of the ghost, although she doesn't realize it's the ghost until later, before the old woman has died, but since she doesn't die in a sudden way, there's nothing she would have been able to do to save her. Like at most, she would maybe have been able to warn her that she was about to die, ask if she had any last words or something. But, now, don't get me wrong, that's not nothing, that's significant, but there's a huge difference between that and being able to save someone's life. For the time being, obviously, eventually. They will die. So what's the difference between these two versions endings? It's only a few minutes before the ending that the Chinese original brings up the notion that maybe it would be possible to warn someone when they are about to die that, that they are about to die if you can see the Grim Reaper before they die. When the female lead reaches the mother of Anna Christina in the American remake, that's when the notion is spelled out. But right before she starts warning people, you realize is when you realize in retrospect that she's she has been getting these premonitions, enabling the warnings and saving people's lives for the entire movie. Those are the dreams that she's been having. The dreams were not of people that the don't that uh, Christina was unable to save. The dreams were of people that she herself could save. I mean, you realize that while the visions of the dead that she had during the day were merely a source of pain for herself. Let's see. The dreams she's been having hold the potential for her to save people. So in a way, the American movie actually builds to the ending, we just don't realize that's what it's doing until we reach the ending. The Chinese movie essentially resolves the conflict right before the ending with the female lead talking to the donor's mother and resolving that the donor kept repeating her suicide and there was no other left to go. The movie turns out the final destination and then just ends. One of the things that works especially well for the original is that the ghosts are not really trying to hurt the protagonist. Some of them are angry, which can make them scary. They're not really the typical Western movie ghost seeking to cause harm. 
Of course, this being a Western remake, some of the ghosts are now trying to hurt people. Yeah, yeah, I guess not not like physically hurt, but they do things that are very clearly like extremely upsetting and traumatizing where in the original Chinese movie didn't seem like any of them were trying to to do something like that. Now That was my opinion. What do you think? Do you think that this movie was as good or maybe even better than the Chinese original? What is your favorite American version of an Asian horror movie? What's your favorite Asian horror movie? It can also be a, a game, you know, which which Silent Hill is your favorite? And yeah, if you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe. Hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. A suggest suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And one talking about the most recent episode of the Kurt Plus Disney Plus MCU shows these days. That is Moon Knight. And one on the most recent episode of The Mandalorian that I've personally reached. And recently the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want my videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.